Hello, everyone, and welcome to the chat. Happy Wednesday. Yay. Happy International Yay. Women's Day. That's us. We're happy to have <laughs> a special guest host. Thank you, Melissa Ross, for joining us hey, today. Hey, ladies. Good to be back. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for showing up. Right? I mean, we, I was a little worried. I was like, I know you two. Just kidding. They were going to be here. <laughs> we'll be here. They were always going to be here. I wore my here. red. I'm the only one who wore the red. I wanted to wear red, but I was very disappointed in myself this morning. I have nothing red in my entire closet. So oh, you I got red, the red lipstick. Got the red lipstick. On. That's it. That's Beautiful. Beautiful. That's my yeah. solidarity for International <laughs> Women's Day. Well, you may notice that somebody is not here today. Henny is out today on a really cool assignment, but she left a message for everyone. Hi guys and happy Wednesday. So I am not going to be on the show today because I am out on an exclusive, very, very fun location shoot that I cannot wait to share with you on the show tomorrow. You've got to tune in at three. So let me just give you a hint of where I am. Let's just say someone is celebrating 20 years of being on the air. That's right. She went down to Disney World in Orlando today to meet the ladies of The View. I don't know, maybe give them a few pointers from the chat. <laughs> <laughs> they are doing their show live from Animal Kingdom this week. And Henny went to get Whoa. all the inside scoop. And she's going to be right back here at the table with us tomorrow to tell us all about it. That is a really amazing assignment. That's so exciting. How exciting for her. Right? And are the animals going to like just stroll by? I want to know. Like, like an elephant just go <laughs> loping through the sky. I love that they're doing the show in front of the giant, uh, the awesome. Tree of Life at Animal Kingdom. It's such, I've spent so much time in that park. It is the coolest, is coolest it? park. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. It's and it smells speaking of <laughs> International Women's Day, kudos to Barbara Walters who came up with the idea for The View. And when she did, oh. the male executives at, at the network said that will never, ever work. Work. That's Yay. awesome. And of course, she knew better, and here we all are right, right now. 20 That's years right. later. That's uh -huh. right. 20 yes. years. Isn't that incredible? I mean, it just doesn't seem like it's been that long. We're old. Yes. Yeah. Blank. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're, you guys are. <laughs> so, as we were saying, today is International Women's Day, and people across the world are taking action in New York. This statue, called the Fearless Girl, was placed across from the iconic Wall Street charging bull by the world's third largest asset manager in an effort to get companies to add more women to their boards. That's pretty cool. One Australian city changed its traffic lights. I love this. The crossing lights in Melbourne were changed to depict female figures oh. instead of the usual stick men that you see. And International yeah. Women's Day is designed to demonstrate the strength of women and it's all coinciding with a day without a woman. Now the group behind January's Women's March held the day after President Trump's inauguration called on women to skip work today. And if you can't miss work, they encourage you to wear red and avoid shopping with exception for small women and minority owned businesses. Mm -hmm. So ladies, as I said, we're all here working, but many women have taken the day off. Um, I think this is really interesting because there are different sides to different sides to, to this uh, issue. But do you think that what they set out to do is happening? Well, I mean, we're here, so it's not, it's not <laughs> nice. entirely happening. Not but, for everyone's job. But yeah. it's raising awareness. I mean, that's why I wore red. I wore it to court. There was another lawyer in court who's a man, and he was wearing a red tie on purpose. I'm not sure people locally knew that it was happening, so maybe not as much. But, I mean, I do think that it raises awareness, and I don't really think this is a both sides story. I mean, I know I saw Anna Navarra on Twitter saying, you know, listen, it's not Republican or Democratic. It's, you know, women's rights. And I know I saw... Adele had a great tweet, whatever women do, they must do twice as well as men to be thought half as good. Luckily, this is not difficult. I, I love that. that. It's awesome. I love that. Right? So, so I would say, too, that um, there's been some divisiveness on social media where uh, the asking women to take a day off work was criticized. Right. But that's something really only privileged women can do. If you're a single mom and you uh, can't just take a day off work to protest, you're not in a position to protest. So it's been criticized from that perspective. But what I would also say is, wherever you stand on this issue, there's such a long history in this country of protest and direct actions like this one. And so anyone that's celebrating and expressing their position by taking direct actions, right. I think that's a good thing for our democracy. But I guess that's what bothers me is that I know that some women are in those positions where they're not afforded that opportunity. Right. to be. So then I don't feel like it's fair for other women to do it when, you know what, I mean, we're all working. I mean, we have to work hard. If I don't show up, guess what, I may lose clients and so therefore the four women that work for me may not get paid. I mean, I am all about a pro protest. I am all about, you know, uh, promoting women in, 
in business and, and, and in, in our, our society, but I just didn't get the don't show up to work. Well, but they gave you different things you could do. I mean, I don't know about, I, I probably am on all kinds of crazy lists, but I got tweets, I got, you know, people emailing me, look, if you, if you have to go to work, you know, go to work, or if you want to go to work, go to work, but you can wear red. Yeah. So I wore red, oh, and you can do, you know, they had a whole list of things that you can do to support other women, and I don't think it's unfair. I mean, I think it's basically, there are different ways you can have your voice heard. If you have the luxury to not go to work, don't go to work. You know, I have all women that work for me, and obviously, if they don't show up, or if I don't show up, you know, there are women yeah. that will be affected. But, you know, so instead, I decided to do this, or, you know, at least be cognizant that, you know, women still struggle to be heard in our society, and if we don't show up, it it will be heard just mm -hmm. by our absence. What, what, what was everybody expecting to happen though? Because I'm on the other side of the fence as you guys know. So what are you expecting or hoping will happen by doing this? Are you hoping men will recognize? Are you hoping women will recognize and jump on board? What's the, what's mm -hmm. the real point behind it in, well, your, I, in your opinion? I think the, the point of this uh, Day Without a Woman is part of this long process that the organizers of the Women's March began uh, at the inauguration. Right. And they've laid out this long series of actions that they plan to keep rolling out over time to protest the Trump administration. That, of course, is controversial. For every woman that is taking a day off work, there's a woman out there who voted for Donald Trump and, and likes what he's doing. So uh, this is organized, long-term protest yeah, is but what I, we're seeing. But I think there's also a bigger 10 issue of, you know, women, we're not in a position, we're not in a post-sexist society. And I think, for me, 2016 kind of hit that home, whether or not you even supported Hillary Clinton, the coverage was so sexist. And I felt like there was, you know, a, a double standard at every turn. You know, women, it, this is, we talked about this a few weeks ago in the Senate when Elizabeth Warren tried to read Coretta Scott King's letter and was told she persisted, she was warned, and she wouldn't sit down. And then a man, a few hours later, got up and did the same thing. I mean, we see it every day, but I think as women, we, we sort of, sh you know, soldier on and say, you know, I'm in a, a male-dominated field, and I just do, do my work. I, you know, I think I do better work than male lawyers, and I just have to, you know, go forward. But sometimes we have to step back and say, you know what? It isn't fair. What Adele said is kind of right. We well, are I have to point out that I like what the 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 guy, the guy on Wall Street who put up the statue, he did it to specifically create a campaign right. to say that we need more women on top. What I wanted to see was that the women on top showing support on a day like this. My boss, the the, the Market president of iHeartMedia Jacksonville actually sent out a media, uh, an email yesterday and said, everyone wear red because like, we need to appreciate women, especially yours truly, who like has worked to get where she is. And so that's what I wanted to see was that huge support from the women who were at the top to say, look, I was where you were too. You, you can be me one day. Well, I'll give you this after the show. <laughs> that works too. I'm okay with that. So what would a day look like if women were to stay out of work? Well, Time came up with these charts. Pretty interesting stuff. First up, it would likely be impossible to drop your kids off at school because women make up 84% of preschool and kindergarten teachers, elementary and middle school teachers, teachers assistants, and special education teachers. Need to cash your paycheck? Well, you may have to find a new bank because women make up 85% of bank tellers. Have a dentist appointment? You would likely have to cancel because women make up 78% of dentists, dental hygienists, and dental assistants. Now, what about a bigger medical emergency? Well, women make up 78% of physicians and surgeons, registered nurses, and physician assistants. Interesting stuff. Now, uh, with all that being said, um, Actually, well, let, let, let's stop. Let's pause and talk about that. Because yeah. once you look at that graph mm -hmm. and that chart, it almost makes you realize women really are running the world. That's yeah. true. We are. We're definitely keeping it running. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great distinction because yeah, I think that's the point. You know, we do have the right to work. We do show up. We still get paid 71 cents on the dollar for what men earn. I mean, we are making the world run, but are we running it? We're not really in the positions. It to couldn't make run decisions. without us. Yeah. That's true. If but women that's really did leave their job for the day, if all women really did leave their job for right. a day, let's go, girl. No one would be able to get anything done. <laughs> But with all that being said, not everyone is feeling the solidarity. The group Right to Speak is organizing a, quote, positive counter movement to the day without a woman protest. So they want women to continue working, serving, giving, sharing, and loving their communities, their families, and their endeavors. The group is encouraging women to post photos on social media of themselves doing what they love using the hashtag NotMyProtest and hashtag we show up. A spokeswoman for the group said, quote, 
We don't feel like the voices on the far left represent all women. We won't allow our voices to be drowned out. So this is a different approach to today. Interesting because, you know, Janet, earlier you said you didn't feel like it was a left, right, red, blue. Right. But clearly, and I and I think, and I'm glad that you feel that way, but right. I think that there are people who certainly, because you even alluded to, you know, Trump being a part of the conversation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, if, you, if you make it political, then I, I can see not showing up. But I, I think it's ironic that a group called Right to Speak says, we don't feel like those voices represent present us. So they are sort of trying to muzzle the voices that are trying to speak. I mean, saying, you know, not showing up, at, you know, at work isn't representing the people you know and love. I mean, some people are doing it for the people they know and love. Some people went to the Women's March with their little daughters because they want them to see, you know, hit that history is still ongoing. I just think at this point, any actions people take are inevitably politicized. Yeah. There's really no getting around it. And we, uh, we're a divided nation, and this is just the latest example of that. And women are in a monolithic voting group. Women are divided the same way male voters are divided. And so it's no surprise to me that uh, there are supporters of this act, day of action who are women, and there are women who it, it doesn't resonate with them at all. I just, know, I'm glad that, that it kind of, it's, it started the, the entire, the campaign, the presidency, the election, started conversations, and I'm glad that the conversations hasn't, hasn't stopped since the election. Granted, it's going to be very annoying to talk about it for the next four years <laughs> and forever. Uh, forever, right. Eight, right. But I'm glad that people years. are realizing that these are things. <laughs> four years, maybe three, who knows? But I'm glad that we're talking about these things because it needed to happen. Well, and, and I think, again, that's, you know, if you take the politics out of it, which I, I'm fed up of, you know, with talking about politics. I mean, I'm at the point where, you know, this wasn't my, my candidate. I didn't vote for him. You know, there are things that I hope Congress is working on. But I want to worry about my issue because I feel like I've spent my whole life kind of putting it in the back seat and a lot of women I know have done that we kind of thought you know what you know we're going to be okay we don't need you know a, a woman president I guess because we it doesn't look like there's one coming down the pike but you know I, I want I want to be heard and I feel like I'm promoting women lawyers I'm speaking out you know about mm -hmm. women's issues that I hadn't thought about for a long time because I just sort of thought, well, we're just we're just lawyers. We're not women lawyers. Well, men don't have to think that way, but I think women do have to think that way. We have to promote each other. And I, I wish that that group would say, you know what, that's not necessarily our issue, but we want to stand with you because you're our sisters. And that's good because the normal, I mean, the especially in the, in the millennial culture, it's so hmm. normal to immediately bash on a woman if you don't like how she looks, if you don't like what she does for like. It's so easy. Twitter. It's, it's almost like exactly. Ugh. It's, I mean, it's key, we call them keyboard warriors. Yes. If you don't like what someone's doing, there's no, there's no positive. There's no. Or if the woman won't date the guy. Other women. Right, right, right. You yeah, were exactly. born in the wrong generation because every time yeah. you talk about the millennials, <laughs> you're just not that person. I was. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I you. straddle uh -huh. the line of the generation that mentally I think, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> another topic for another day. All right. Well, here's something most women can probably agree on: having a private space to breastfeed. A new bill called the Fairness for Breastfeeding Mothers Act would require buildings that are either federally owned or leased to provide designated private and hygienic spaces other than a bathroom for nursing mothers. Janet, is this not something that's already a law? I've I figured it would have been. Well, there's there are things in the Constitution that you could point to to say we have a right to do this. You know, it's equal protection. It's you know we have a life, life liberty and pursuit of happiness. But what was interesting is it has to be a designated area that's not a restroom. And I think that is not there isn't a law for that. I mean, these are only federal buildings, so they're not saying you know if you own a restaurant you have to have a breastfeeding you know room for women. But if you work in a federal building, a lot of women do have to pump at work or you know if, if they're lucky enough to have their baby brought to them there's daycare in a lot of federal buildings and to do it in a bathroom with that little oh, it's fold gross. it's kind of mm -hmm. gross I, can i just share yeah, this i, mean, I yeah. think you already know the answer to this <laughs> some years ago when i worked full-time here at first coast news that is what i did yeah mm -hmm. after i had my second baby i pumped in the bathroom here in this building there was nowhere to do it mm -hmm. but that location and so when legislation was brought forward to find a designated spot for working women, that was a very, uh, I think, uh, appropriate and needed piece of legislation. I personally experienced this. Mm -hmm. When I worked at uh, a station in Orlando, Florida, and was covering the Daytona 500, I was sitting in the live truck <laughs> as the cars were <laughs> zipping around me really loudly. <laughs> vroom, vroom, vroom. I was pumping in the live truck, and I made all the guys leave that's what you have to, we all had to do. Right. So I say, 
hurrah yes. for this law. Yes. And to all the women that are benefiting from it now. You know, and I've had my rant on this show before about breastfeeding. I was not good at it. I was awkward at it. And even though I had what they call the hooter hider, like that, it's like a blanket. <laughs> that you put, my my babies would kick, and my hooters were like out there for everybody to see. It was just awful. I've never heard that rant. And, oh yeah, I mean that's that's the brand. It's called a hooter hider. Um, but I will never forget. I was with a girlfriend who was really good at breastfeeding. I mean, she could breastfeed like twins, it's and like nobody a would ever know. Oh, I envied her. I really did. And we were at a restaurant, and somebody said, "You need to take your that to the bathroom." And she said, "Well, then you take your meal to the bathroom." Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's amazing that this is this is sort of, and that was not too long. I mean, your no, kids are. No, I left. I left here in '06. So that was 11 years ago. Yeah, so yeah. this wow. is so necessary. But isn't this tied mm -hmm. in a little bit to what we're talking about, the day, the universal day of women? I mean, if mm -hmm. we stay home and we say, you know what, until we address these things, until lawmakers address our issues, we're not going back to work. Or we'll go back tomorrow. Let's go. <laughs> Late night guru David Letterman weighs in on the political content being used by current late night host. Hear what he has to say they should be obligated to do, and let's see if you agree. We'll be right back.